Good morning. I hope everybody is doing well this morning. It's uh, a little bit cloudy here in Little Rock, uh, but the temperatures are mild, yes. which of course, as someone who used to live in Blyville and Risa currently lives in Blyville, what we what we considered Tornado Alley um, of Northeast Arkansas, weather like this kind of freaks me out a little bit. It just, you know, the... Um, the air pressure and um, yeah. things like that no. <laughs> has me a little on edge. But anyway, I hope it's well where everybody else is today. Nice and sunny here. Good, 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 good. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen again. Let's see. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Hang on just a second. That's what I wanted to share. This is what I'm sharing. Okay. Okay. All righty. Um, so we start started last week talking about um, kind of planting some seeds about how we can do Holy Week a little bit different this year and um, to be able to communicate better, um, to be able to um, communicate through um, connection and not just a one way uh, channel of us just going, this is what's happening, this is when it's happening, and this is where it's going to be, but rather trying to create a message that is going to uh hopefully reach people in a different way and and make them um, know that they are welcome, um, that we're not just opening our doors for our people, but that we are open and we are ready to see new people and we um, are a safe place to be and um, all of the good things. And so um, we also talked last week about um, how do you want your people to know you? Um, you know, that that's important. That's one of the first things that we have to identify before we start creating a communication plan is, is kind of what is our, what is our end goal? Um, what do we want people to um, know about us? How do we want people to feel about us as a church? Um, what is it that we're trying to convey? So, um, this week, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some gaps and um, that we all have. Um, and this is, I mean, everyone has a communication gap somewhere. And um, so we're going to go through a couple of these and I hope that you will jump in and um, share um, where your communication gap might be um, for your church um, or your uh, ministry context. And um, I will say that, um, so in the annual conference, we communicate through a website, through social media, word of mouth, and then I, we don't do as much signage, but when we have an event, it's key to have good signage. Um, I, I attended a local church event last night and um, there were people wandering all around the church and it's, it was pretty much a, I mean, it was a nice size church. I mean, I think they average, you know, around 75 on Sundays. So it was a, it was a nice size church and, um, and they didn't have any signs, <laughs> no directional signs, which, which is, um, and then no signs on the inside to tell people, you know, where to go, et cetera. So um, do you all in your ministry context, do you all see, would you like to share about where you know that you have a communication gap, where you have room for improvement? And this can be with your members. This can be with your community. Um, go ahead, Keith. Well, uh, our website is horribly out of date, and that's that's been on my list since I've got here, but of course uh -huh. it hasn't happened. 
Well, uh, but but the other is uh, there's no media in our area. There's no, there's not even no a weekly newspaper. Weekly newspaper. Wow. Uh, the, our closest newspaper is Cabot, uh, and that's you know eight miles north and yeah. And so there's there's no media. There's no radio. Um, there's none of the 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 old school mass media available out here. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 one hole. We have several, but that's that's one. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, and that's a that's a big deal. I mean, so so how do you best how how do you feel like the people in um, this community communicate with one another? Definitely word of mouth. Yeah, word of a lot of word of mouth. Some Facebook, um, okay. but I wouldn't say that that's extensive. Yeah. 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 It's definitely mm -hmm. not for all. Um, I, there's a, um, church that I was helping them kind of evaluate their worship and their reach with their online worship. And, um, they get more views on, um, YouTube than Ooh. they do on Facebook. Um, more people are, you know, we're, we're finding that, you know, what do people give up for Lent these days? social media we're we're always we're looking for reasons to go nope <laughs> so um you know it that's something that's something to consider for sure um hang on let me go back oh okay sorry i put it on sorry okay um so keith mentioned website um, I visited with uh, Randy Seal and I hope he's going to jump on. We were, we were just texting. Um, and, um, we talked about because he has a three point charge. Um, but he wants, to, he wants a website and he wants a website for all three churches in his charge, um, a combined website. And, and I said, well, I want to visit with you first before we just pull the trigger and, and say, go on a new website. Because so often today, um, Facebook works just as well as a website. Um, you're when you are Googled, um, when your church name is Googled, um, if you don't have a website, your Facebook page is going to be one of the first things that pops up. And if you've done your website, if you've done your Facebook page right, and you have GPS directions, you have, um, you know, in the information little part where you can, you know, describe who we are, um, that you have your worship times and, um, uh, you know, all, all of the, th all of the, the things that, that people want to find when they go to a website, um, you can house all of that on a Facebook page and not have to add an additional step in maintaining communication throughout the week if that makes sense so um anyway but a website is a good it is it is a good channel and it is a gap if you do not keep it updated and when you have two churches or three churches or sometimes just one church with no staff it is it is it is almost impossible I mean I I, I see you and I know this and and I'm I'm have all the bells and whistles. I have mm -hmm. two people that keep our website updated. So I, I, I get it. Um, social media, um, this can be a gap. If you are not sharing anything other than your live worship services. Um, and especially if you just share it to Facebook and there's no engagement. Um, there is nothing about that that makes people want to engage. Um, so that, that is a gap. Um, you might even want to just, you know, as far as a baby step in the next couple of weeks, you might even want to have whoever records your worship service. If you do an online worship service, or if you do, um, an online devotion in the morning or once a week or, you know, whatever, um, you might want to consider you, um, when you upload it to Facebook, um, also issuing a message with that kind of a 
Um, good morning, everybody. Um, we're, you know, I recorded this yesterday, but I hope that you have a great week today. In my message, um, I reference um, 1 Samuel, um, you know, chapter one, verses nine through 12. And um, I hope that if, if you don't get to finish all of the video, that you can at least crack open your Bible this week and read the scripture um, and, and know that we're praying for you. So, um, so social media for a lot of us is a gap, even if we are posting frequently. Risa? Um, so every Sunday we actually live stream directly to Facebook. Yeah. So that goes on there. And then of course, throughout the month, I put different things on, I share different things on uh, Facebook. That's the biggest outlet to the rest of the community because that connects to other people other than just our members. And right. we actually have people on Sunday morning that will engage with, like, I'm not the one that's engaging on Sunday morning because I'm busy in the choir. Right. But we have another person who has administrative um, permission on our Facebook page and she will actually uh, engage with with people during worship and then other people will do that so I can go back and I can look and see it you know and we'll have major engagement on Sunday morning during the live stream so that seems to help um, and then of course I post events and things like that you know and pretty pictures and so on and so forth just to try to you know get word out plus we also use constant contact which that's through email sure. obviously Absolutely. And we have a newsletter, but that's directly to our, that's just to our members. That's in yes. church, if that yes. may, in congregation. Word of mouth, obviously we always have that. We have a website and I keep our, I try my best to keep our um, calendar updated. Mm -hmm. But I think what, this is giving me an idea. Maybe if I just say, hey, on Facebook to everybody, hey, go look at the website. Our calendar mm -hmm. is up there because people, I don't think they realize that that is kept updated all the time. Yeah, it would that's be a, a great that, post. That's that's a look, great post to put in your queue every week. That'd is be a great idea. A link to your website calendar. Yes, so, because all they'd have to do is pull that up for the entire month, and they can see all of the events in in one glance instead of seeing just one post. If it, it, that seem, I, maybe I need to try that. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, I think that would be a great idea. Um. And, and here's the thing, and we talked about this last week, um, Facebook is no longer, um, um, you know, surprising or, um, you know, going to, that someone's going to be doing something just incredibly new or different. Um, it's expected. Yes. It's expected. It's not a new, bright, shiny thing anymore. Um, it's just expected. And so... Um, you know, I see social media as um, as being one of the easiest and the quickest ways to communicate with your community um, because you can do it from this right here. Um, as long as you are talking, as long as you are posting on your Facebook page, like you are a person and you are talking to people and not like, um, um Chili cook-off, Thursday night, 7 p.m. What, there's nothing about that that says, come on in, we want to be your friend. You know, I always try to add like, hey, we hope to see you there. Come on and join us at the end yes. of those kinds of posts. Yes, and, and never be afraid to give a call to action. Never be afraid to say, this is the, this is your chance to go meet your new neighbors and invite them to church. Um, or at least tell them about our online worship or tell them about the chili cook-off or tell them if they've got kids, tell them about the Easter egg hunt um, or, you know, whatever. This is, you know, it's, it's, it's always a good thing to give a call to action, not with every single post. I mean, you know, people are going to get tired and ignore it, but, but every now and then give a, give a call to action and encourage your people to engage with other people <laughs> about your church and, um, and that kind of gets into um, what we were going to talk about eat, uh, next is word of mouth. And um, so uh, the, I'm going to, well, let's just talk about that. I think word of mouth is the most important communication channel as a church 
that we have. I, I really honestly do. Um, gone are the days of um, putting something on a website or putting something on your Facebook page and saying, we're having a trunk or treat, you know, y'all come. Um, people are going to come, but new people are probably not going to come unless somebody who's already going tells them about it. And so it's that word of mouth. Yes, we need to get the information out and we need to do it in a personable way that so that it is not um, uh, just uh, sterile and, um, and one way communication, you know, just here it is, nothing else. Um, you know, we need to, we need to act like we are talking to people and say, I know it's going to be raining tonight, but we sure do hope that you'll be there. And we hope that you'll take advantage of, um, inviting, you know, a new family member or inviting a friend, um, you know, whatever, but just make it, make everything that you do more personable. And, and that is, that's an easy, easy switch to, to work on that image, to work on what people actually think of you. And when I say you, I mean, your church, your, your, um, your ministry context. So um, I'm going to go to the next one. Um, so we've got different audiences and I, I know most of you, um, I think all of you have been in a class of mine before and we talk about audiences and if you, I mean, and you know, you know, in preaching, that there, when you are preaching, you are preaching to different audiences, and um, and oftentimes that is um, uh, leaders, your leaders in your church, um, like your committee chairs, um, your big committee members. If you if you have a simplified structure, it's that whole simplified structure leadership team. Um, if you don't have simplified structure, it's your trustees, it's your SPRC, it's your um, finance. Oh, right. um, those are your leaders and your lay leader, of course. Um, it might trickle down to um, leaders of small groups. It might. Um, it just kind of depends. But um, also, we have our members, our people that come in and they sit in the pew on Sunday. Some they go to Sunday school, some come to the potluck, um, but they sit in this pew or they watch online and we never hear from them. <laughs> we never know. Sometimes they send a check. Sometimes we they're just this this you know anomaly that um, we don't know anything about them. And, um, and so that they deserve a different type of communication, um, than your leaders within your church. Um, also your frequent visitors, your people that show up, um, maybe for Easter and for Christmas, um, or, um, maybe, you know, three or four times a year. Uh, and then there are the seekers and this is your community. These are people within your community who have been hurt by the church, who um, do not have a church, who are, oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing the, the things, um, who are, um, for one reason or another, um, they are not churched folks. They may consider themselves spiritual. Um, they may still believe in Jesus. They still may be able to just quote, quote scripture, but they are not involved in a church. And, and these are what we call seekers and they may not even be looking for a church um honestly but um you know when we're talking about holy week communication all of these people on this list um these different audiences are people that we want to communicate with about the life of our church during holy week and because holy week is such a it's you know for for pastors and church staff, it's, it's, uh, it's the Super Bowl. It's the, it's the, you know, all hands on deck. Nobody gets sick. Nobody takes a vacation. It's, you know, we're doing all of the things. Um, now, and, and so what we're going to do today is we're going to identify number one, um, which audience is most important when we are trying to, 
um, focus on Holy Week? Which audience um, do we want to rank as our um, as our key audience that we want to communicate very well with and maybe in a new and innovative way? Um, I would say that our leaders, probably not. Those are the people that are going to balk when anything changes. Am I right? Some of them. Um, I would consider another audience, the members. Um, and I would even consider breaking it up into um, people, people over the age of, um, you know, maybe 55 and up. Um, maybe, um, you know, 50, 50. I don't know. Well, depending on how large your church is, if you've got just an all, um, you know, older aged congregation, then then guess what? You're lucky. You get to communicate in one way with your with your members. So, um, older people tend to like um, a piece of paper, as we know. Um, they like a bulletin. They like a, a printed newsletter. Um, and um, now now that's not always the case. I'm generalizing here, but um, but pieces of paper are our, our younger people. And, and let's see, I just turned 54. Um, I like an email. I like an email and I like something that I can take a picture of and save it on my phone and then put it into my calendar on my phone. Um, I, and I also am, am part of, part of a, um, you know, a generation that really sees paper um, as being wasteful and, um, and just identify as, um, it's an opportunity to be able to cut costs and, um, help protect the environment a little bit. So, um, anyway, but those are two different audiences, two different age groups. So they're going to communicate differently. Um, our frequent visitors, um, do you keep like a database or a list of people who are visitors every now and then? Do you have um, a name and contact information, whether it is a mailing address, a phone number? People usually don't give their phone numbers out much um, or an email address. If you don't have this, um, consider this, this Easter, um, inviting people to share this information just so that not we can keep up with them. Okay. Cause a lot of these people, listen, we're there because of my mother will be devastated if I don't show up or I'm, I'm going to start my life over again. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't want too much too soon. Um, but we can share this as we would love for you to be able to keep up with the life and ministries of um, this group of people and, and these Jesus followers and not, we want to be able to keep up with you, but we want you to be able to keep up. And so that, um, so that we're not being too pushy and we're, and also that's so expected sign the pew pad. We're glad you're here. Pass it along. Um, we'll see you next year. Um, and then the most important part about that is the follow-up. Is the follow-up. Even if you know this person doesn't live in town, you, even if you know they're only there for once every six months to visit their grandmother or whatever, but they give you an address or an email address, that needs to be immediately added to your database of people who want your newsletter. Okay. And, um, and, and take the time to look them up and add them, you know, ask them if they want to be, you know, follow your church page. I wouldn't request them as a personal friend. Um, as the pastor, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go that far. Um, but I would invite them to like the, your um, Facebook page because that is a way that they can still feel connected. And, um, and we cross a slippery slope. And, and y'all argue with me here, um, but I feel like I am a, a, a professional church visitor. I'm a, I'm a visitor to churches every Sunday. And, and I also usually go by myself. And um, 
I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, in my years of going to different churches, I've never gotten um, any feedback. I mean, I've never gotten any follow-up, which people probably have it in their head. She's never going to come back or she's just doing a job. She didn't really want to be here or she's not worth pursuing because she goes to a different church every week. Well, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. I um I would love to be able to find a church home online. Um, I would love to be able to join an online Bible study. I would love to be able to um, be connected with a church um, more so than just going and visiting a different one every Sunday, which that's not going to change. But I would also love to know if this church is in dire need, their boiler broke. And, and guess what? If I have a little bit of extra income that month, I want to know and be able to send that church 200 extra dollars. Um, I mean, that's just me, but if we don't give people a chance, if we just, um, cut them off, <laughs> you know, and just don't even make the effort to connect with them and follow up. Um, I have a feeling we're missing some people. Um, we're not, we're not following through on that offer of friendship and, of um, and of connection that we've talked about. So um, this is super easy. This, These are things that can be done that you can do if you are a, a one woman or a one man team. Um, this is These are things that can be done from your phone. Um, if you have the pew pads um, where people have signed in and, um, you know, if, if it's, if you have a Sunday school secretary that keeps up with, you know, this kind of stuff or a worship person that keeps up with visitors and things like that, you know, just make sure that they add that person's name and um, to a list, even if it's on just a, you know, if you have a notepad that you, you know, start 2024 and here are all the visitors that we've had either online or in person and, um, and, and do your best to try and follow up with them. Um, okay. Seekers. This is where I hope we can dig in where I think that our, um, hospitality and our innovative communication can really make a difference. Um, our people are going to show up for Holy Week. Our, we know that. We know our leaders are going to show up. Our people in the pew are going to show up. Um, we're also going to have a lot of our frequent visitors that show up. Um, I would honestly let those people be your, um, the people that are, uh, I don't want to say that you're not as concerned about them, not true at all, but that they don't need a whole lot of extra emphasis. Um, and, and I know, you know, we, we have our big three events of the year in the church. We have Advent, we have Lent and Holy Week, Easter, and then we have some sort of summer or fall activity, whether it's VBS or a trunk or treat or backpacks or the big bakes, United Women in Faith bake sale. We all do, you know, three big events a year. And um, these events are where we try to target people who don't go to church, people who are in the community who might not know us, but are um, that we would like to get to know. That's basically what it boils down to is that um, you're in the community. You are not going to a church. We see you and we would like to get to know you. Um, so for Holy Week, I would like to offer the challenge that you potentially Focus on the people who have never stepped foot in your church. Not the people who left during COVID. Not the people who left during disaffiliation. Um, as you know, one or two may come back. That's it. It's we've got to keep looking forward. We've got to keep looking. We've got to focus on um, abundance um, in what is outside the doors of our church and not scarcity. 
and um, and this will be a great first step. So um, I would say I love a good spreadsheet, but then again, not everyone has Excel um, or, you know, I mean, actually, if you have an ARUMC email address, you have free access to the Google Suite. And through the Google Suite, um, there is a um, platform for do, that you can create a spreadsheet, um, you can create documents, um, you can work just exactly as you would in Microsoft Office, which costs a lot. Um, and the Google Suite would also cost a lot, except that you get it for free when you use an ARUMC email. So you actually can create a spreadsheet, but not all of you like a spreadsheet. So anyway, um, what we want to do is we want to categorize by office, by by audience, and and we want to and and what we've kind of decided we're going to do is we're going to for Holy Week this year we're going to focus on the community. We're going to focus on our seekers, um, and they might not be seekers that are seeking Jesus, um, or they might not even be seeking a church, um, but these are seekers who are not connected. Um, who who we would love to connect with. How about that? So, you know, if you want to, if you're a larger church and you have staff and you have all of the things, then heck yeah, go ahead and create separate tabs and identify the best ways to com communicate with your leaders, identify the best ways to communicate with your members, and identify the best ways to communicate with your community. But for, for this cohort, we're going to focus on community. So um, first steps for doing that. Um, I think we've planted some seeds. I think we are starting to think about um, offering friendship and not just a transaction and not just um, wanting to get people in the door. Um, that we are, we, I think we see the importance of ministry outside the doors of the church uh, that no longer can we say, y'all come on in, we're going to do Bible study at four and that people are going to drop what they're doing and come, especially people who don't know you. It's just, you know, maybe one in a hundred might show up and bless that one. We are grateful for that one, but it's just not a um, technique that works any longer. So, um, the first thing, the second thing that we want to do, we're, we're, we're creating a mindset. We're creating a mindset of, we want to reach out to our community. We want to be the friendly church. We want to be, um, we want to always be inviting others. We want to always be out and about in the community. We also want to be very serious about the Bible, about worship, um, and, and, and all of our Wesleyan theology. Um, first step, second step, um, you need to share this vision with your leadership team and with your staff. You need to share this. You need to, um, you know, some of us are better at creating, um, hype <laughs> than others, but, um, but you have your way and you know, you know, your people, um, and um, that needs to be your first step beyond um, taking on the challenge to create a new culture. So visit with your leadership, share with them your vision, create a little hype about what this could look like. I want to reiterate though, y'all, that this is not... Um, when we start focusing on bringing joy and having joy and less on we've got to get $5,000 in the plate this weekend or we're not going to be able to pay our electricity bill. Um, and that's, that's serious. That is serious. And I know that happens um, every Sunday for some people, but we have to move beyond that um, at least to the outside world. We have to move uh, to a place of abundance and joy and, and, and be that to our neighborhoods and our communities. So um, next, we need to ask for volunteers. 
we need to get a volunteer. We, I, I would say um, get uh, two or three people who you think would be wonderful in creating a campaign um, for the church to reach the community for Holy Week. And this is like something you probably need to do like today. Call, text, email, um, three, two people, one person if you want to. I mean, if, if you're worshiping 12 and less, maybe there's just the one person. Um, consider it as someone like a, um, a Sunday school teacher. Consider it someone who, um, who knows how to gather people. Um, someone who knows how to create space and make sure that there's coffee, make sure that there's a lesson, and uh, make sure that everyone is welcomed and um, feels comfortable and is prayed over and and is offering friendship. Those are your people you want to consider. OK. Um, also, I don't have to tell you this, but you got to include you got to include your ushers in this because, um, number one, we don't want to be telling them what to do but yet we wanna be showing them what could be done, how we could make a few small changes um, to be able to reach people because ushers, greeters are the first people that as a visitor or somebody in um, the community who is going to uh, um, say they're gonna come for um, Ash Wednesday, they wanna know what it is and um, they're gonna come. And the people who greet them are the first faces that they see. They're the first instances of um, the first vibe of the church. Sometimes that's good. And sometimes that's not good. I, um, I attended a very large church, one of our largest churches. Um, and it's been about a month ago. And I walked by the usher. I was going to the 11 o'clock worship service and I mistakenly walked by the usher who was sitting in a chair, older gentleman. He's been doing this for years. He's a, you know, patriarch of the church, I am sure. But I walked by him because I didn't see him sitting in the chair to walk on into the sanctuary. And he yelled at me, what are you doing? What are, you just walked on by me. You got to come get your bulletin. <laughs> you know, um, there's there's places for our our matriarchs and our patriarchs, um, and and we want them to serve in a way that that they feel worthy and seen and important and needed. But um, but it's also time to also include um, asking that young dad or asking the um the lady who is the retired school teacher um if she will start filling in and act as a partner um and um you know let that gentleman sit in his chair and greet people and and hand out bulletins till the rest of his days do not take that joy away from him but we got to fit. That's a gap. That's a real gap. Um, because if I didn't know this church, if I weren't, if I didn't understand the church and the people and, you know, all of the context, I don't know that I would have stayed. Anyway, um, we need to work with our hospitality team while we are working with our communication team in planning Holy Week. Um, we need to make sure that um, all of our gaps are identified and that you talk about them with this group. They need to know, okay, there's not any signage for um, which door people need to come in on Sunday morning for Easter worship or Palm Sunday worship. Well, we need to figure something out. We need to call Janie at the print shop and see, can she... What's the cheapest she can make a sandwich board sign or just a, a realtor sign that we can push into the grass or whatever? Or would she consider giving us five of them? But we need signage. We need to be able to say hello to people as soon as they pull in the, um, the 
parking lot, we need to be able to let people know who are driving by that this is happening. Um, it's a sign of good sign of communication and a good sign of hospitality. Um, also, um, let's get into the habit of having um, ushers and greeters step outside the front door. Um, except if it's raining and except if it's um, bad weather. Um, but do you, I don't know if you know how hard it is to walk into a church for the very first time. And, and a lot of times these doors don't have windows or if they're windows, they're stained glass and they're heavy, dark doors. And we don't know what we're walking into. But man, oh man, Village United Methodist Church in Hot Springs Village, every Sunday, they have all of their greeters outside in the parking lot, greet, waving at people as they come in, um, meeting people, visiting with people, um, seeing people get out of their car, asking, yelling, do you, do you need me to help carry anything? Um, holding doors open, epitome of hospitality and good communication. That's starting off saying, we want to be your friend. We're so glad you're here instead of waiting inside for people to come to you. Um, I would, um, let's move on. Um, create that ministry team. I would get on it today. One person, two people, three people, and your greeters or your, your, your main greeter and then let them communicate. Um, I would try and, I would try and invite everyone. Um, and, um, and I would also try to include some new people who, um, have never greeted before, but you, you know, they would be awesome. Even just for Holy Week, just for, you know, just say, you know, this is just for Holy Week, but we need your bubbly personality and your go get them attitude to help convey really good hospitality during Holy Week. Okay. Let's also talk in closing about word of mouth. Um, y'all, we are terrible about, um, equipping our parishioners to invite people to come to things at our church. We're terrible. Why do, why do United Methodists, why do we not do that? Are we, and, and I've put a lot of thought about this and I've, I've even, you know, I have lived with my mom. And so this is like a common theme. Um, over coffee for us. Why? Why do we feel weird inviting our neighbors to come to this online Bible study? Or why do we feel weird about, you know, inviting our friend who we know does not go to church? Why do we feel weird about not inviting her? I mean, about inviting her. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know if we're trying to not relate to, you know, pushy people. Um, and so we try and take a softer approach. I don't know, but we don't do it well. We don't do it well. And that needs to improve. And, and we know that people need to know specifically what they're supposed to say and how they're supposed to do it. Um, I would consider, um, I would consider um, planning a Zoom. If you have Zoom capability, if your parishioners have Zoom, um, if they don't, I would have a um, class on a Sunday morning, um, a 30 minute coffee um, in between Sunday school and worship or block out the Sunday school hour for one week and everybody meets in the fellowship hall or in one of the big Sunday school rooms. And you talk about how we're going to invite people to church and all of the different activities that are happening during Holy Week you you talk about it and you you talk about how important it is that that we as members of this church who love this church and have um who nobody wants this church to grow more than us and the lord and and so why are we not you know sharing this and sharing the good news of the thing the great things that are happening here with the grocery store clerk with the waitress the why are, why do we feel weird about that 
but I would gather people, y'all. I would gather people and I would say, let's talk about it. And let's talk about ways that we can feel more comfortable about inviting new people in. Um, strangers, friends, family. Um, what can we do differently um, to, do we, do we need to print off some little cards that we carry in our purse or in our wallet that we can hand to someone and say, no strings attached. I know you don't know me, but I would love to get to know you better. I would love, I wanted you to know that this service is happening. It's the music will be incredible. Um, and, and we're a, we're a group of people that are, are, are wonderful people to call friend. Um, you know, maybe it's that, maybe it's just going over some talking points of, you know, we're looking for new friends. <laughs> we love the ones that we have, but we're looking to increase our friend group. Um, would love to have you join us or, um, you know, let us know when we can also show up and, and support you. Um, these are things that we need to be doing and saying and feeling comfortable about. And, and it doesn't need to just be us as leaders. Um, this needs to be grassroots level communication and word of mouth. And, um, and, but it's up to us to be able to equip our people to do that. Okay. Coming to an end to do this week. Um, I'm not telling you to create a spreadsheet, but just jot it down, jot down. Um, and, and, and really and truly, we know who our audiences are. And, and we've also decided we're going to focus on our seekers. We're going to focus on our community um, this, this holy week of 2024. And um, what you might want to do is um, in this audience, you might want to go ahead and start thinking about um, different groups of people within that audience. School teach school the local school that you provide backpacks for, um, the school staff, um, the families who come to your food pantry um, or to your um, warming center or to your, you know, whatever it is that you do. Cause I know all of y'all do something and you do it well. Um, um, think about those groups and jot those down so that when you do meet with your people, you can say, okay, we need to think about how we want to reach this group. Is it with the flyer? Is it with, hey, um, is there any way that I can contact you via text, via email, whatever? Because I would love, we would love to have you um, come in and get to know us. And we'd like to get to know you. And I want to be able to tell you about everything that's going on. Um, identify those audiences within your community. And, and, and when you meet with your team and, and we'll talk next week more about how we can figure out the best way to reach those different people. Is it with the flyer? Is it with the Facebook post? Is it with the phone call? Is it with the text? Is it showing up on somebody's doorstep? Um, is it, you know, is it a postcard? What may it be? Um, or maybe it's a sign. So we're going to talk, we're going to get detailed very next week. Okay. So also on the to-do list, um, call a team together and sell this idea, sell this idea to your people that you want to um, be able to get excited about and that are going to help plan out how we reach people in the community for this Easter. Um, cause that's probably going to be the most difficult part of this y'all. I visited with a church this week. I went and it was a very small church in Northeast Arkansas and, um, went and did a program at night and everything I said about innovative, new, um, different, um, being friends, um, making comfortable space. Um, they all tied it to me being, um, a, a liberal progressive that is trying to change the book of discipline. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah. let me tell you, <laughs> I know what you face. <laughs> but when you use, the term hospitality, when you use some key words that I just mentioned, um, some of our naysayers are, it's, it's triggering. I witnessed it firsthand. So um, but, but, and I think that's probably going to be your hardest part is, is selling this idea of let's try something different. Let's just try it this year. 
And if, if we see a good result, if we see lots of smiling faces, if we see any new people, if we see, um, if we make more connections, if we're, um, you know, whatever it is that we want our end result to be, um, if that's successful, then maybe we tweak it a little bit and try it again in Advent or try it again for the fall festival. So, um, and then also um, identify your volunteers. Um, identify those people that you think, or that person that you think would be perfect to um, lead this campaign, lead this charge. Um, if you have someone that works in real estate, if you have someone that works um, in marketing, um, say at a bank, or is um, a, a nonprofit leader, or is a um, someone who is always out and about in the community, who knows the community, who knows how to communicate well, that's your person or your people. Um, if you don't have any of your people, maybe it's a Sunday school teacher, maybe it's your Bible study teacher, because they have shown that they can put together a group of people, make them feel welcome, and 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 they're showing great um, great possibility for for bringing out that radical hospitality. Okay, so this take a screenshot, whatever. I'm gonna send it um, in an email. I'll send it sooner than I did this week in a Thursday evening email. I mean a Wednesday evening email. Um, but that's it. Questions really quickly. What do you see that is absolutely not going to happen or that is really going to be difficult for you? Is there anything you want to troubleshoot? Well, not so much troubleshoot, but quickly, or you can send this to me an email if you want to spend time on it now. What sort of things are people putting on YouTube other than services? Um, devotions. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know... I know a lot of, do you have you, do you have young people at your church, Keith? Uh, yeah, actually some. Gotcha. Um, put them if on you, it. If, if you mean put under them, 40. Yeah. Put them on <laughs> it. Um, yeah. Um, hang on. Um, there are app, free apps on your phone that, I mean, first of all, you need to have someone taking pictures everywhere. You need mm -hmm. pictures. And then, um, have them get on their phone and use iMovie or i something and create a video clip. Upload that to YouTube. Upload that to Facebook. Or just share a whole bunch of pictures. Now I wouldn't share three different pictures of the of the same two people. <laughs> you need to pick the, the best one, but give that responsibility to somebody younger. You know, I mean, let them, they're already on their phone. Let them be productive on their phone and make a video mm -hmm. and um, and slap it up there on YouTube. And, and then on your Facebook page, link that YouTube video um, and and make sure that, you know, in your in your on your YouTube channel that you're also linking to your Facebook page or, or to your website if you have one. Um, but, yeah, there's there's lots of ways to do more than just online worship um even if it is recording yourself and going hey everybody so i just got out of the grocery store i was um my the lady who was checking me out said something um about she was having such a terrible day and the spirit moved me for me to ask her when her next break was if she would like for me to pray with her and guess what? She let me pray with her. Y'all, can you join me right now and just um, offer a, a, a tiny prayer um, that that God will uh, cover this young lady and um, that she will know that she is important and loved and that she is needed and that she also has a, a church, uh, church home right here of people who love her and are praying for her. Okay, thanks. Bye. There you go. You're going to get more engagement on a real video like that in the parking lot of the grocery store than you are on, um, you know, perfect background, perfect lighting, um, camera on a tripod, um, 
Bible right here. Um, just start, just start filming, just start saying, Hey, I just saw a butterfly and I just want to share it with y'all that when I see a butterfly, this is what it means to me. It brings hope. And, and with this time where, as we're, as we're uh, entering into the Lenten time and, and leaving Epiphany, um, the sign of a butterfly uh, continues to bring me hope and hope in the, in the, in our risen son, Jesus Christ. I hope y'all have a great day. <laughs> you know, very simple. And that can go on YouTube and be linked on Facebook. Super easy. So um, y'all have been great. Um, I hope you learned something today. Um, I um, I hope you are able to um, get some things done this week for this. I think it's going to be fun. Um, I love the idea of in, involving as many people as possible because that's where your grassroots in uh, word of mouth communication starts. When you create a hype group within the church, they go out and tell their spouses. They go out and tell their friends. They tell everybody in their Sunday school. They tell um, their Bible study. They tell the people they work with. Um, then they start telling their child's teacher. Then they talk about it at the grocery store. They, you know, it's it's kind of an organic thing when you create um, this hype group within um, it. It and allow them, you know, to give them a little bit of freedom to feel like I can do this. I can do this. And and pastor is is encouraging me and and cheering for me. Um, I can really make a difference. Um, so anyway, I hope y'all have a blessed week. Um, have a good weekend. I hope it stays dry where you are and that we get to have a little more sunshine this week. And um, I uh, will pray us out if that's okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, gracious God, we are so glad to gather uh, with you today. And, and it's just so cool that we can um, gather through technology and, and, and know without a doubt that you are with us. We ask that you guide us through the rest of this week and this weekend and uh, that you work through us as, as we work with our people to try and connect with uh, those who are lonely, those who are seeking friendship, um, and those who are ultimately seeking you, Lord. We ask all of these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.